This video is an overview on the operation of the grinding machine for compression screw manufacturing. Screw parameters are controlled by physical components of the machine that can be changed out to experiment with different screw designs. By changing the pulley's tooth count, you are able to change the pitch of the screw. To change the chuck pulley, you will slide the chuck into the first bearing and then slide the shaft through the pulley and into the second bearing. Making sure that the chuck is pushed up against the first pulley, secure the set screw on the first bearing and then secure the M3 bolts of the pulley onto the shaft. Make sure to have one bolt on the pulley go into the slot on the shaft of the pulley to prevent the pulley from slipping. The second bearing only supports the shaft and the set screws are not used. To install the belt, work it on by starting it on the front of the pulley and rotate the chuck to get the belt installed. The belt should run in the middle of the pulley. Generally, I have found I am able to achieve my desired pitch without changing the threaded rod pulley. Selecting the correct angle grinder mount for the handedness of the screw being made and for the pitch and diameter of the screw. These calculations are set up in a spreadsheet in the FreeCAD model and are set to be parametric. It is easiest to install the mount off of the angle grinder and then install the angle grinder mount onto the angle grinder. If using a different angle grinder, a different tool mount might need to be designed to properly secure the angle grinder. Adjust the guard on the angle grinder to a position that allows you to machine the screws while protecting your hand. Angle grinders without a guard should not be used with this machine. With the grinder removed from the machine, install the round stock through the free end support and into the chuck. With enough stock inside the chuck for future motor mounts, then tighten the chuck. Using a square, check and position the round stock so that it is normal to the end of the frame. Tightening the lower part of the free end support to support the round stock in place. Make sure that it's adjusted evenly on both sides so the stock remains parallel with the x-axis of the machine. While holding down the top section of the free end support, tighten the two M8 bolts to secure the top bearing in place. Install the angle grinder onto the y-axis slider and secure it into place using the lever on the right side of the slider. To move the tool in the x-axis, rotate the threaded rod. This can be done by hand, however it is more efficient to use a drill to move the tool. Two different discs are recommended for machining screws. The first disc is used for roughing passes, while the second disc needs to be a new or lightly used disc that still has squared edges. Discs used only for finishing passes will last longer and generally can last for at least four screws before it can no longer be used for finishing passes. With the finishing pass disc installed, move the grinder in both the X and Y axis to the closest point to the chuck without touching the chuck. Install the profile mount with the desired profile pre-installed. The profile is what determines the channel depth of the screw and this can be customized within FreeCAD. Align the probe with the pad on the far left, tighten the back side of the profile mount to secure it in place. Adjust the probe so that it is touching the pad while the abrasive disc is in contact with the round stock. On the Y axis slider, tighten the M3 bolt to secure the probe in place. Remove the finishing abrasive disc and install the roughing disc. Starting on the left side near the chuck, move the angle grinder away from the screw and start the angle grinder. Once up to speed, slowly move the angle grinder towards the round stock and begin moving the grinder in the x-axis away from the chuck by rotating the threaded rod. Meanwhile, apply light pressure in the y-axis. The grinder motion in the x-axis should never stop while the grinder is in contact with the round stock. Do not apply too much pressure in the y-axis as this tends to cause the workpiece to overheat easily. Continue making passes back and forth until the probe stays in contact with the profile for a duration of the travel. Move the grinder so that the abrasive disc can be easily changed. Once the finishing abrasive disc is installed, move the tool to the end of the screw and continue machining the screw. At this point, continue machining until few sparks are generated and you are satisfied with the screw. If the channel depth needs to be deeper, release the probe and move it back the amount you want to adjust and make passes to achieve the desired channel depth. 
The screw being made in this video was filmed in real time to give you an idea how long it takes to machine a single screw as well as the feed rate to go with the angle grinder. When using the machine, the use of eye and hearing protection, natural fiber clothing, and respiratory protection is required. Once the part is complete, you can cut the round sock on the machine with the angle grinder or remove it and cut it off of the machine. The screw will have a lot of burrs and further sanding will be required. The best way is using what you have available. I have found that using a radial bristle sanding disc that fits into a rotary tool works best for myself for what I have available at this time. Thank you for watching this tutorial and good luck on machining your own screws.